We've covered a lot of history at WFAA in the 75 years we've been on the air. And when Delta Airlines Flight 191 crashed at DFW International nearly four decades ago, it changed the aviation industry and meteorology forever. Tonight we're taking a look back and we should add that some of our historic footage may be jarring to see. Here's Jobin Punnicker. Some people can sit here every minute of every day, every weekend, every Sunday, watching the planes at DFW Airport. Look at that. For Mike Kasha, it started when he was young. And that was our entertainment. He's a former news photographer for WFAA, captured nearly half a century of the nation's worst, best, most bizarre moments. Clouds are getting really low including what happened here on August 2nd, 1985. Delta 191 Heavy, reduce your speed to 160, I'll press. A Delta Airlines jumbo jet lies in ruins tonight at DFW Airport. The total number of dead is still unknown. The crash of Delta 191. 137 people had died virtually total destruction. Mike and his reporter raced to the airport. Luckily, came in behind an ambulance. I didn't have to say anything. He just waved us in. That got them on the tarmac with unexpected, unprecedented access to one of the worst aviation accidents ever. And then when the wing hit, it just burst into a flame of fire. And one of the most iconic images the massive, burned out, broken off tail of the plane. It was almost spiritual in a way because it was so quiet. I mean, over a hundred souls had ascended into heaven from that spot. What and how it happened would generate headlines, congressional hearings, studies for months and years. We're very interested in this cell right here. That August 2nd evening, this unassuming cell of a storm. It looks pretty nondescript. Produced strong microbursts. The rain was so hard you could, so couldn't see 30 foot in front of you. Which contributed to disastrous wind shear. There were very strong accelerations and decelerations. Get some uh, variable winds out there. Uh... Or strong tailwinds, strong headwinds. Tom Bradshaw is one of the lead meteorologists with the National Weather Service. Very strong momentum from the microburst just basically brought the plane right, right down into the ground first crashed onto Highway 114. At 200 miles an hour, it struck a car. He was like 30 foot from his car. Uh, he was decapitated. And two large water tanks, leaving a trail of debris and death. It's an awful saying, but the, the pilot is always the first person to arrive at the scene of a crash. <laughs> Nobody to land at the airport, we've had a crash. It is a miracle that 24 people survived this. Uh, you wonder what your purpose is your whole life. Including Richard Laver, who was 12 years old at the time. He spoke with WFAA on the anniversary of the day he lost his father. The only thing I remember to this day is the violence, the impact. Uh, my father covered my body. Delta 191 was a catalyst. Radar has come a long way since. Airports now have wind sensors throughout. Air traffic control has special weather service units. We know so much more now versus what we knew in the 80s. The FAA has required airplanes be fitted with instruments that detect wind shear. We've learned to have a healthy respect for storms and basically to stay out of them. Tonight, a sudden but severe thunderstorm may have played a part in the crash of Delta Flight 191. WFAA's coverage was continuous. It was compassionate and comprehensive. Letters from the public poured into the newsroom. I don't know, it's just still trying to gather everything right now. I can't believe it happened. That was a once a career story. A story that would set off changes in aviation and meteorology. There are some things Mike Kasha cannot unsee, even through a lens. Still watching planes take off and land. <laughs> the crash of Delta 191. It's hard to imagine. We're coming up on 40 years. Where did life go? In DFW. 
I'm Jobin Pinecker. And we invite you to watch our program this Wednesday at 9 p.m., celebrating 75 years of WFAA. And yes, uh, some legends return.